we're going to talk about predation of our wildlife. Predation of our wildlife by illegally introduced wolves into Wyoming and Montana and Idaho that have populated themselves into no less than a, another 11 states beyond that. I, from time to time, have the opportunity to watch a TV program called The Last Alaskans. There's a man on there and his wife and some family members from time to time. And he lives in the vast Alaska wilderness. Haimo Korth. Haimo Korth and his wife Edna. They live, they live beyond the Arctic Circle, a very remote country. He lives a substance life. He lives off the land. He hunts and fishes and provides for he and his wife and his family and traps. And he has repeatedly, repeatedly said on his program, and just in the past days he said so, that wolves eat everything that there is. They are killing machines. They eat and eat and eat until there's nothing left. And then they move on. I can confirm that unequivocally. I've got to see this full circle here in Wyoming, where I live. What's happened to our elk, what's happened to our deer, our moose, a great share of our moose are gone to never be here again. They've got off into our bighorn sheep, working on our bighorn sheep. And we've got game departments in every state. They're not doing what's necessary. They don't care. We have a lot of elk in Wyoming, in other parts of Wyoming. We used to have a lot of elk here because the area was fed by the migratory herds out of Yellowstone Park. The people that are visiting this part of the country, it's a rare, rare occasion to see an elk, a single elk. Not thousands of elk like they used to get to see when people used to come to this part of the country and see Yellowstone Park and everything that, that makes up that part of the landscape and the wildlife. I have people stop by here. I know people. I know myself. I've seen it. You can't go and hardly ever see an elk. We used to see dozens of moose in Yellowstone Park. They were eating out the first thing. Everywhere that those wolves have been, they've eaten our moose out. They've cleaned our elk out of this part of the country. And our game departments simply don't do anything about it. Because they really don't care. The only thing they care about is their paycheck and their retirement and so forth. That is the bottom line. They've attached themselves to some of these federal government type programs this is what's basically driven some of these things. They've had their hand out, and they repeatedly said that their hands have been tied. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department's hands have never been tied. We have a situation where our governor oversees our game departments. We've had three governors in a row that refused to do anything. Three governors refused to do anything about this situation. And hopefully, this year, maybe we can elect a governor that will take care of this problem. Because I, I know a person or two that's running for governor in Wyoming that knows the real score. And for those of you people that live here in Wyoming that are listening to this, I suggest that you vote for Harriet Hageman for governor of Wyoming. She knows this inside and out. She's been the attorney for the state to do with wolves from the very get-go, and it's one of the only reasons why we're even hunting the, uh, the few wolves that we're hunting is because of her efforts and other people's efforts. She understands what's going on. She understands the abuses of this wildlife and so forth. And this isn't just totally limited to the wolves. We got a grizzly bear situation. This year, we supposedly are going to hunt grizzlies. There have been over 7,000 people that have applied for 22 grizzly permits here in Wyoming. 
Now here's here's the true story about this grizzly hunt situation. I want everybody to understand it. Anybody that lives anywhere that has any desire to ever come to this state to perhaps hunt a grizzly bear or hunt elk or anything else, you need to understand what's really going on. I have a friend that went to the meeting where they decided, the game department decided on what they were going to do with the seasons, the commissioners voted on it and so forth. It was a unanimous seven vote. Well, all the time that that meeting was going on, there was a bunch of environmentalists haggling in the meeting out loud and disrupting that meeting. This was a, a public meeting showing complete disrespect for what was going on. These, these game and fish officials were repeatedly telling these folks to control themselves. They would not control themselves. They purposely were there disrupting the meeting. And when the seven vote came down, a bunch of women were darn near laying down on the floor crying and bawling. The fact is they were crying and bawling. They just simply hadn't got on the floor and was rolling around. That's how bad it was at the meeting. And the fact of the matter is this season that's been set, here are the perimeters. Going to allow 22 grizzlies to be killed. But if one female grizzly bear is killed, then the season is totally closed. And all you folks that bought those tags, those 22 tags, is $600 for a resident tag and $6,000 for a non-resident tag. You just threw your money right down the john. Plain and damn simple. The other fact is, you've got to go to a class. I wouldn't go to a class. I wouldn't apply. I didn't apply for a grizzly permit because I won't hunt under the under the perimeters that I'm about to describe to you. This is how it's going to run. Everybody's got to go to a, I believe it's a five-day class on being in grizzly country and hunting grizzlies. Everybody's going to be handed two bear pepper spray. You're going to be handed a satellite phone. The season is nearly three months long. It starts in September, runs in near the end of November. Now, only two people out of 22 are going to be allowed out in the state of Wyoming to hunt a grizzly bear for 10 days. And if you don't see a bear and you have had no chance and you haven't shot a bear, then you just also burnt your tag. Because you don't get to hunt the full season. You only get to hunt 10 days. The other thing is, let's say for instance, I and another fella were hunting together and we come across a pair of grizzlies. We can't shoot either bear period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We cannot shoot either bear because the chance is that this could be a breeding pair of grizzlies. Heaven forbid that we we shoot this pair. We have to pass them up with the premise that maybe we're going to get to see another bear, but quite likely we might not see another bear at all, and we just burn our tag. Okay? The other aspect is that satellite phone that you're carrying, as soon as you kill a bear, you've got to call in and so that they keep track of what's going on. This whole thing is nothing but socialism. This is what socialism is all about. What I'm describing to you here is the control of people. This isn't a hunt in essence of how we know hunting. Going out here by yourself in the out of doors and tracking and finding a grizzly and shooting a grizzly as a hunter. This is socialism. Nobody should want to go hunting under those set of circumstances. I don't care how long if this season actually works and we actually have a season we actually get to kill a bear or two I'm never going to apply under those set of circumstances because I won't be involved with a socialistic hunt of our majestic wildlife. We have a right in this state and other states to be able to hunt. We have a right to not be bothered and enjoy what our heritage is. This is simply taking away our heritage, our rights, our property rights, every aspect of our constitutional rights 
It's simply wrong. People need to stand up. I'm describing all of these things here because I see things slipping away from us. I've seen these things slip away for years. When they planted the wolves in here in 1995. Within a couple of years, the, the, the moose were damn near gone out of this part of the Wyoming where I live. I've seen all these things happen, but I don't see anybody out here putting their, their shoulders together with other people like perhaps myself and standing up and talking about this, talking the truth. I'm telling you like, like it is. This wildlife is disappearing. They want to put wolves. There are a few wolves in the Colorado. They want wolves planted in the Colorado. The game department down there supposedly is fighting it. I don't know how hard they're fighting it. I don't know whether they're going to stop it. I have no idea. If there's any chance, folks, that they've got an idea of bringing wolves and planting wolves into your state, you better get your head and your mind straight and put a stop to this. Because once this gets in place, it's just a runaway thing. This is a gravy train. These game departments are not stopping these things because it's a gravy train. It's their likelihood, it's their paycheck and their retirement, and they don't give a damn. Wildlife doesn't come first. They come first and wildlife is second. It's real, real obvious what's happened here. Everything that I have mentioned, and I've talked about wolves before and predation and so forth, but I'm trying to reach out even further and asking, you know, more and more people need to be, be aware and get involved, however they may happen to be able to get involved to see that we don't lose this wonderful freedom. This, this country has some tremendous freedoms. But in the past years, we've seen a lot of this freedom slipping away and slipping away. And this is just one of the aspects from this end of things. You know, if, if there are no game to hunt, the idea and the premise has been for years, then we don't need the, need the firearms if we, if we can't hunt. This is, this is the mentality of these people. They could, they could absolutely care less, you know. It was just on in the past few days, a TV program brought to my attention that I didn't watch, but somebody else watches it. I have various people that watch for these things for me. And it was showing, you know, the show on Yellowstone Park and the grizzly bears. It was centered around grizzly bears. And these environmentalists were just jumping up and down with joy and having a wonderful time watching grizzlies just going along and just mopping up eating elk calves in Yellowstone Park. Well, if they eat all the elk calves, you're not going to get to come to Wyoming to hunt, and the people that live here in Wyoming aren't going to get to hunt. Think about it. Think about what's really going on here. This is what's driving this whole thing, is these, these socialistic-minded people they could care less about anything, you see, and they want to destroy everything. It isn't just a hunting aspect. They want to destroy all of our rights and so forth. They have no idea. In, this, in the same sense, they're destroying it for many aspects for themselves, but they could care less. I care, and I'm going to continue to care, and I'm going to con continue from time to time to come back to this subject so that people become more and more aware. We in Wyoming are very, very well aware of what's going on in Montana and Idaho and one thing and another. It was commented in this TV program about the grizzlies in Yellowstone Park that there are 680 known grizzlies. Well, the fact of the matter is if we take all of Wyoming and all of Montana and all of Idaho put together, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of over 4,500 grizzly bears. These grizzly bears have been on the endangered list, were taken off here last year, and, you know, 
How long that's going to last, I don't know. It was taken off one time before for a couple of years and nothing was ever done. But anyway, they're always quiet, crying foul. These environmentalists or the biodiversity group, various, various, various groups that are crying foul. Now we've got considerably num considerable number of, of various Indian tribes hollering that this bear is sacred. Well, it's amazing. If that bear was on their reservation, they'd probably have it completely exterminated. But when they hear of us hunting these bear and one thing or another, they're just they're just running around crying crying foul that we shouldn't be hunting this this bear that you know they consider sacred and so forth. All this is nothing but but a smokescreen, a scam game to try and stop what we like. So you see I pay attention to what's going on, I know what's going on, and we need a lot more people involved, we need a lot of people to step forward, and maybe at some point in time, maybe, just maybe, we can be lucky to turn this the other direction.